Welcome to another day here in the Yarn Dungeon where I'm all about showing the world that crochet is killer. Today we are going to learn how to make a sweater on the Addy Knitting Machine. I have to say, this is definitely one of my favorite patterns to make on the Addy Knitting Machine just for the fact that like I'm obsessed with sweaters and cardigans. They're definitely my favorite accessory to have and the fact that you can work it up on an Addy Machine, I have no problem creating an entire new wardrobe every single season just by my Addy Knitting Machine. So I'm excited, I'm ready to go. I hope you're excited as well. Let's just go ahead and dive right into it. Let's grab up all of our materials, chit chat about it for a little bit, and let's get into this pattern. So here is a complete list of everything that you're going to need in order to work up this sweater on the Addy Machine. If you are a beginner to the Addy Machine, I would suggest using a worsted weight because the Addy Machine loves it. You're not going to have any problems with it. You're going to be able to totally focus on your technique and actually working up the pattern here. It just all in all is going to work with you and not against you. The yarn that I am using is a light number three here, which means that the stitches are going to be a lot further apart. The distressed areas are going to be a really, really distressed, almost completely see-through, but that's the look that I'm going for. So just keep that in mind when you're choosing your yarn, that the thickness and the size of your yarn is definitely going to correlate and change the look and the feel of your sweater. And then we have all the measurements that you're going to need to take in order to work up the sweater. Make sure that you do keep your tape measure by you. So as you're working up your panels, you can kind of measure as you go just so you're going to get the feel of the length of each panel before you have it completely done. This way you can customize as you're going along. Starting with the panels, we're going to go ahead and make sure that this on the side is pushed up to flat knitting. That's what we're going to need in order to create all four panels. Then we'll need to grab a little bit of waist yarn and make sure that this color is super different than the actual color you chose for the sweater. That way, when we go to take off the live stitches, you'll be able to really easily tell what is waist yarn and what is the actual stitch. Starting with the three black teeth on the right hand side of this yarn guide, we're going to go ahead and place this yarn right in front of the first white tooth and then go ahead and leave about two to three inches on the inside of the addy. Then we're going to alternate. So we went in front of that tooth, we're going to go behind this one, in front, behind, in front, behind, and we're going to do that all the way around until we get to the very last white tooth. Now that we've reached the last white tooth, you want to make sure that this yarn goes right underneath this red ledge here before you put it back into the yarn guide. So open up the yarn guide, put the yarn inside there, close it back up. Now you're going to want to hold on to the yarn a little bit here and add a little bit of tension as we start to crank the other way. So make sure that you have a little tension there, that the yarn actually goes underneath that first white tooth. and just go slow for the first round back. Now that we've got to the other side and the last white tooth, once again, make sure that this yarn goes all the way underneath this red ledge. Normally you just have to go ahead and put that very first black tooth down and then you're good to go. Apply a little bit of tension and now you're good to go. So go ahead and cast on four rows of waist yarn. Next go ahead and grab your scissors once you've made it to the end and cut off about a two inch tail there. Open up the yarn gauge. Throw that in the middle and now you're ready to switch to your actual working yarn. This one you want to make the tail a little bit longer, so I do about like 6 to 12 inches. Then lay that right in the guide there, close it up, and we're going to start to crank. And this is where you need to go ahead and use your measurements that you took for the length of your panel. I decided to go with 24 inches, which means I need to go ahead and crank out 116 rows. So we're going to clear up our count here. 
starting at zero. And once again, real slowly for the first time around. Make sure you watch for stitches like this that kind of get raised. This is where having a loom pick comes in handy so you can just go ahead and pop that back down so it stays in place. As long as everything looks good, go ahead and crank out as many rows as you need for the length. Like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and use the 24 inches so I'm gonna crank out 116 rows. Once you have all the rows that you need here, make sure that you stop in the same place once again. So make sure that all three of the black teeth are on the right hand side and the white tooth is right here. Grab a pair of scissors and we're gonna wanna cut this rather long. So about 24 inches because we're gonna go ahead and use this to close up the live stitches here at the end. Having more is way better than having to go ahead and attach it later on. So open up this yarn guide. Throw that right in the middle there again. Grab your waist yarn and put it right in front of this very first white tooth. Pop it into the yarn guide. And we're gonna do four rows of the waist yarn. Grab your scissors again and cut this waist yarn. You only need about two to three inches here. Open up the yarn guide, throw that in the middle, and just start to crank in order to drop out this very first panel. Some of them might need a little extra help, so go ahead and keep your eyes open for that. And now we have our very first panel totally done here. So repeat that whole process three more times in order to have four panels in total. Now we're gonna work up our two sleeves here. So we're gonna click this button down because we're gonna be working in the round. That way it doesn't stop. It just goes on through there. Once again, go ahead and grab your waist yarn. And this time we're gonna start with this very first black tooth. We're gonna put the yarn right in front of it and then just repeat the same thing we did for the waist yarn, alternating in front and behind the teeth all the way around until we get to that very first black tooth again. Open up the yarn guide, toss the yarn in there, close it up. Crank this over to the first three black teeth, then clear this up here and do four rows of waist yarn. Once again, grab your pair of scissors here and leave about a two inch tail. And make sure that it goes in front of this very first black one here. 
Grab the working yarn, lay it inside the yarn guide with about 12 to 24 inches, once again, a rather long tail. Close up the guide, clear up the counter again. For my sleeves, I'm deciding to go with 16 inches, so I'm gonna do 77 rows here. Once again, just go slow for that very first time. Make sure that all the stitches get caught, and like right here, you can see some of them are not all the way pushed underneath this lip, so make sure you pay attention to that, otherwise it could potentially drop your stitch the second time around here. Another reason why it's important to go slow for the very first time around. Once you have the amount of rows that you need, grab your scissors here and cut another 24 inch tail. Put that right in the middle, then grab your waist yarn again. Place that right in front of that first black tooth, right into the yarn guide. And do four final rows of waist yarn. Cut the working yarn, throw it back in the middle, close up that yarn guide, and go ahead and take the first sleeve off of the adding machine. Now you have one sleeve totally done, go ahead and repeat that whole process one more time. For the ribbing, go ahead and grab your Addy Express here, or if you're gonna to continue to do it on the Addy King, just go ahead and count out 22 stitches, then place your Addy stopper there. Make sure on the side it's set to circular knitting, find that very first black tooth, then grab your yarn, place it in the front here, and we're gonna to start to cast on, alternating behind and in front, each tooth all the way around. Open up that yarn guide, place the yarn in there, move it over past the three black teeth, then clear up your counter, and we're gonna go ahead and crank out 10 rows for the ribbing. Once you have all 10 rows done, you're gonna to wanna to grab your loom pick here and a five millimeter crochet hook. So there are 22 teeth on here, so we're just gonna go ahead and drop every other stitch. So we're gonna ignore this first one and we're gonna drop the second one. So every even number, we're gonna go ahead and actually create the little ridge for the ribbing. So for this first one, go ahead and grab your loom pick and pick the live stitch off of the actual tooth here. So holding on to it, we're gonna pull it right over top of this tooth. Then we're gonna drop nine stitches. So holding on to this part right here, we're gonna go ahead and drop this one and then pick your way through and count. And as you're dropping this one, make sure you actually catch this live stitch. So right there, that's the live stitch. Hold on to that. Grab your crochet hook here, and we're gonna go ahead and work this stitch back up. So holding on to the live stitch, you're gonna grab this bar right here, then move this one over top of that bar. Then do that with the next one. Pick up the bar, move the working stitch over top of it. You can also just go ahead and use the hook like that, pull it that way. Whatever works though, just make sure it's comfortable for you and you're actually holding onto this live one as you're going. Once you have that last one picked up, we're once again, we're gonna hold on to this live stitch and we're gonna pull it right back over top that second tooth there, let go. And now you can see we've created this really nice ribbing here. 
Once this is all done, make sure that this yarn is pushed all the way down underneath this little red lip here. Then we're gonna turn and we're gonna start to work in the fourth stitch. So one, two, three, four. This is one we're gonna work in next. It also says the numbers right here too. If you ever get lost and need to know which one you're on, you can just go ahead and check out those numbers. So I'm just gonna continue to do this all the way around here until I've made it all the way back to stitch number one. This is what it should look like here when it's all finished up, a nice ribbing on every other stitch here. Then we're gonna go ahead and do one last row all the way around just to clean it up. Then grab your scissors, cut the working yarn, place that in the center, grab a little waist yarn, place the waist yarn right in this yarn guide here, and crank out four more rows. Cut the working yarn and go ahead and take the ribbing off of the adding machine. And now we have the first ribbing cuff for our sleeve. So go ahead and repeat that process one more time. So here are all the parts that we should have now. We have four panels, two sleeves, and two of the ribbings to go on the sleeves. So everywhere that there is that orange type of yarn, that's still an active stitch. So I'm gonna need to go around and close up those stitches there. But I just wanted to show how everything's gonna start to lay together here. I mean, honestly, it's already starting to look like a sweater. Now we need to go ahead and pick up all the live stitches here. So live stitches are the ones that are still attached onto this waist yarn. So this one right here, live, that one's live. You can tell, especially because I used contrasting colors, you can see a very clear line of the stitches that we need to pick up. Because I want it to be a loose, distressed type of sweater here, I'm gonna use the five millimeter crochet hook for this and use a single crochet all the way across. In order to make the distressed stitch here where you have a drop stitch, all you have to do is just not pick up a stitch. So we're gonna start here and I'm gonna show you as I get going. Start right in that edge and then pull that through and then we're gonna turn the project, just kinda starting that one off. Now we're gonna do a single crochet in that first stitch. And then as you're going, keep in mind how many actual drop stitches you want for each panel. So I'm gonna do three drop stitches for each panel. So right here, I want this one to be distressed. So I'm gonna skip this one. I'm gonna go over to the next one just like that. Now, when we pull this off, this stitch is gonna drop down and we're gonna have a nice, long, stretched out stitch there. So keep doing that all the way across, placing a single crochet in each active stitch here and then planning out which ones you wanna drop. Here's what it looks like, We're totally done. A single crochet all the way across and it kind of makes a nice border too. I'm not gonna add any other like ribbing or anything to the bottom or the top of the sweater here. So this will be the actual finished edge. Now we need to go on the other end of the panel and pick up all the live stitches as well. And this side, I'm not gonna do any drop stitches. I'm just gonna do a single crochet in each stitch all the way across. Now that both sides are done, we need to go ahead and take this waist yarn out. So just kind of run your fingers along, find the edge here, and just start pulling on it. And normally one side pulls out a lot easier than the other, but just kind of work your way through it. Definitely don't cut it, especially if you're planning on making more sweaters. Save all of this waist yarn, that way you already have it all planned out here. I just like to put mine in like a big jar and then I wind it all up together and place a little sticky note with it that says sweater. That way I know that this waist yarn goes in order to make a sweater.
This side is the one that had the drop stitches and there you can already see it's already starting to work. So all you have to do is just kind of tug on either side and then it's gonna make that really cool drop stitch effect there. Like I said, I have three of them. Let's see if I can find the other two. Here's this one and just kind of work your way down Laying it out on the white background here, you can really see the distressed stitch there. It's totally perfect, exactly what I'm going for. Like I said, you can put as many of those as you want in each panel, but I'm just gonna continue to do three in each panel. So just repeat everything that we just did three more times for all the rest of these panels. Go ahead and do the same thing for the sleeves as well, doing a single crochet just on one side, the side that you're gonna attach onto the sweater, and then drop a couple of stitches on the open end here where we're gonna actually attach the ribbing. For the ribbing, you do the same thing too. Just do a single crochet all the way around. Don't do any drop stitches on this. It took you a long time to do the ribbing. You definitely don't want to drop any of those. Then using a yarn needle here, just go ahead and weave in all of these loose ends. So working with two panels at a time, you're gonna need a yarn needle and you're also gonna need some yarn about twice the size of your panels here. Cut the yarn and attach it onto your yarn needle. Depending on what type of yarn you have, I like to double knot it here just so you don't risk accidentally dropping it halfway through. We're gonna use the mattress stitch to attach the two panels together. So go ahead and lay the panels side by side here and we're gonna attach one part here to one panel. So pull the yarn all the way through this first stitch, then leave about six inches here and attach that yarn onto the panel. Once again, I like to do it twice. Make sure these are lined up nice and even and go through that bottom stitch on the other panel. Starting off, I like to do it a little bit loose at the beginning here. So we're gonna go right underneath this loop here, pull the yarn through, but I'm not gonna pull it all the way through super tight because the mattress stitch does a really good job. If you pull it all the way through, it's really kind of difficult to actually see which row you went through. And you wanna make sure that you're going through the same exact row all the way across. Otherwise, it's gonna end up being a little bit wonky here. So just go ahead and do it nice and loose like this to start off with. We're gonna go through this next loop right over here. And then just keep working that all the way down here. So we're gonna go underneath this next loop Underneath that one, this is an excellent time to go ahead and throw on a podcast because we have this whole length to go all the way down. So definitely throw on something, podcast, horror movie, whatever you're into. I'm just gonna keep on working this mattress stitch all the way down to attach the two panels. Once both the front and the back panel are seamed together, now you're gonna to wanna to lay them on top of each other and grab your tape measure. Just go ahead and lay the tape measure on there and decide how many stitches you need to seam inwards. So once again, you're gonna grab your yarn needle here, twice the amount of yarn that you need. Go ahead and cut that, attach it back onto your yarn needle and we're gonna to start to seam the top here closed, that this portion is gonna lay like right on top of your shoulder here. There'll be a neck hole in the middle and then shoulder on the other side. Now we're gonna attach the sleeves onto the body. So working with your yarn needle and a little bit of yarn again, we're gonna start from the top here. So I'm gonna attach it right to this section.
Then once again, we're just gonna use this here and we're gonna do the mattress stitch all the way across. And so just go ahead and line these up here and start to do the mattress stitch. When you get about halfway here, we're gonna stop, look at it, make sure everything's going good. And then we're gonna start to seam down the back side of it here, get that all seamed together. Then we're gonna seam the bottom portion together. So for right now, I'm gonna seam mattress stitch this front part to the front of the cardigan. Now we're gonna attach the ribbing onto the sleeves here. So go ahead and grab your yarn needle and some yarn once again. Obviously this is a lot smaller than the sleeve that we made here. So there's gonna to have to be a couple of stitches from the sleeve that correlate to the cuff. Otherwise it's gonna stretch it out way too much and that's not what we're looking for. So go ahead and find the end. And we're just gonna use the same thing again. We're gonna match a stitch. But like I said, we're gonna use this same stitch right here. We're gonna use a couple times for the sleeve. So continue to do that all the way around until you have your ribbing totally attached onto your sleeve. Okay, so it is totally done and I'm actually very, very happy with how this turned out. Everything all put together, how the thumb holes turned out, honestly, I'm just very, very happy with it. I just wanted to show you like full length what it all turns out to be. It actually is relatively long, so just keep that in mind with the rows that I used how long it actually turned out. This entire pattern is totally customizable, so if you don't want it to be as long as I made mine, like I said, just go ahead and reduce the rows that you add onto your panels, and there you go, you have a shorter version of this sweater here. Also, just keep in mind that this pattern will change depending on what type of yarn you use and the weight of yarn that you use. So I used a lightweight, yarn here and you can see that it's relatively see-through like obviously where I have my drop stitch it's really really see-through but that's the style I was going for that's the vibe that's the look that I wanted with the sweater if you use something like a number four medium or like a worsted weight type of yarn it's gonna be the stitches are gonna be a lot closer together there's not gonna be as much of a gap in between it which I've definitely made it that way as well keep that in mind if that's what you're looking for you want a fuller thicker type of sweater, one that is not gonna stretch quite as much as mine is doing here, that's also another option, and look for a number four or worst to weight type of yarn. That's gonna be your happy place. But that is all I have for you ghouls today, so thank you so much for hanging out here, working up on the Annie Machine, this super distressed sweater. Also, let me know in the comments down below are you super excited about this? Like, are you gonna bust out your adding machine like right now, today, and get started on this sweater pattern? Let me know. Also, let me know the colorway that is screaming your name because honestly, this turned out like super Beetlejuice vibes to me and I'm totally here for it. But once again, thank you so much for hanging out with me here in the Yarn Dungeon. Have a fantastically spooky day and I will see you in my next video.